Hey guys, how's it going? So, Bandai was kind enough to send me a code for the new Dragon Ball The Breakers game. Originally, I had no interest in the game, but since Bandai sent me the code, I thought, why not give it a try? And boy, was I not disappointed. There are some things in the game that I'm not a huge fan of, but we'll go over that later. So let's start off with what Dragon Ball The Breakers is, because before I got the code, I pretty much knew nothing about the game either. So. Dragon Ball The Breakers is an action survival game very similar to Dead by Daylight. You take control of a survivor and go around the map collecting keys, Dragon Balls and rescuing people, all while the raider is hunting you down. The survivor's main goal is to escape the raider. This can be done by summoning the time machine, summoning the backup to the time machine, or by defeating the raider in combat. I know what you're saying, Web? You can fight the raider? Yes, dear viewer, yes you can. Around the map, there are crates and breakable objects. From these, you can get anything from zeni to weapons, but one of the items you can get from these drops are called charge cubes. They range from small to large. When you pick up one of these charge cubes, it charges up your meter in the bottom left of the screen. Once your meter in the bottom left of the screen has completely filled up, you can transform. When transformed, your character can fly around, but also you gain access to attacks, which you can use to fight or distract the raider while the other survivors look for keys. The other survivors can transform and help you fight as well if they're charged up too. This game is extremely fun once you get into the flow of it all. Okay, let's go over some things this game does well, and then we'll go over what needs to be improved on. Number one, being a survivor is actually fun. Since the map is so big, you always have something to do or somewhere to explore. In other games of this type, you end up going through the exact same areas multiple times, and after a while that gets pretty boring. But that isn't a problem in Dragon Ball The Breakers, since you can see where on the map you are and plan out where you want to explore. Number 2. The variety of gadgets at your disposal. In the game you have several gadgets you can use, some help with exploration, others help you if you get found by the raider and can save you, like the smoke bomb, or my personal favourite, the trampoline. This thing has saved me against Cell so many times. I don't know if it messes up the tracking for the raider or something when the survivor uses it, but it is a very effective way to escape. Number 3. The pickups around the map. In the crates around the map, you can find different items like rocket launchers and Vegeta's gloves. Both of these can be used to distract the raider if they get too close and give you an opportunity to escape. Personally, out of the two weapons, I think Vegeta's gloves are the coolest because you can literally fire a Gallic gun at the raider and it looks so cool. Number 4. Playing as the raider. I only got to do this once, but that one time I played a Cell was probably the most funnest match I did. When you play as the Raider, you genuinely feel so powerful. I'll show you one of those moments now. Super Kamehame. Oh my god. What the hell? Like, hunting down the survivors, absorbing them, and then transforming was such a cool experience. And when the game fully releases, I can't wait to use Cell again. But sadly, no game is perfect, and Dragon Ball The Breakers is no exception. Let's start with the biggest issue for me, and a lot of players. The combat. Considering the developers are the same people who made the Xenoverse games, it's honestly surprising how clunky the combat feels. This goes for survivors and the raider. I don't know how to explain it, so I'll probably just show you. All I did was press square in both circumstances, and the character does a full auto combo. You also have the dodge button, which is kind of pointless. The way it works in the game is once the raider has you in his sights, he auto tracks you. If an attack button is pressed, so unless you pair the dodge with an item, you're still going to die, even if you try to dodge. Next is the character creator. Now, Dragon Ball The Breakers reuses a lot of assets from Xenoverse and Xenoverse 2, which is fine for the maps and the lobby. I don't really think you can get much better with what they actually made, but like, for the character creator, it was very disappointing to see the exact same customization options as Xenoverse, a game which came out 7 years by the way. The only difference is the reskinned UI. Now, 
I'm not asking for every customization option to be brand new, but at least add one or two new options. If you can do that for the clothing, you can do it for the faces and the hair, which would most likely be easier. Number 3. The Gotcha I love me some gotcha. Genshin Impact, Marvel Contest of Champions, Arknights. But in this game, it feels extremely out of place and kills any feeling of progression this game could have had. And what I mean by that is everything is locked behind the gotcha system. All the gadgets and all the transformations in the game. Like Dead by Daylight, you need to earn your skills by playing matches and leveling up, which gives you a sense of progression and gives you the push to keep playing the game. But in Dragon Ball The Breakers, there's always a chance you do a random gotcha pull, get the best gadgets in the game, and then what do you do? You have no reason to keep pulling because you already have the best items in the game. I think it would have been a lot better if all the gadgets were a level up reward and have the gotcha solely for transformations. That way, Bandai get to keep their gotcha system in the game but also gives players the push to keep going, to grind for all the gadgets. Number 4. The Roll System I really don't like the way this has been set up. So the way it works is, before you start matchmaking, you can choose what role you'd like to be, the survivor, the raider, or random. So you would think that whatever role you choose would be the role you end up playing. Nope. Let's say you want to be the raider. If other people in the group you get matched up with also choose the raider, the game will choose at random who the raider is. But also, there's this whole priority system. So if someone else has a higher right raider priority than you, then you have no chance of being the raider. This is such a dumb way to do this. While the beta was on, I set my role to raider. It took 8 matches before I finally managed to become Cell. I think it would be so much better if they just let you choose what you want to be and then actually let you be that role. But Bandai works in mysterious ways I guess. And that's pretty much everything I have to say about the game. So overall, I think this is a pretty okay game. It's not the next big Dragon Ball game everybody's been waiting for, but it's not trying to be either. To me, it feels like this is just a game to keep us Dragon Ball fans entertained while the real next big Dragon Ball game is being worked on. This is the kind of game I can see getting boring pretty fast if you play it on your own, but it would be very fun to do with your friends. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.